Robert Techmind's video. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Pluto Plus. Now, this is essentially an add-on Pluto, but on steroids. It has all the features the original Adam Pluto should have had. Now, the first noticeable difference is that the Pluto Plus is housed in a nice metal housing, as opposed to the plastic housing on the original Adam Pluto. Now, as we start to look around the Pluto Plus, we notice there are now four antenna connections, two for receive and two for transmit. On the other end of the Pluto Plus, we'll now see two major differences. So first off, there is a micro SD card slot and secondly, an ethernet socket. Now this ethernet connection is actually a fully working gigabit ethernet, which you can plug directly into your router. Now I'll show you how you can set that up a bit later on. Now, before I take it apart and show you the main board, let's take a quick look at some of the key enhancements of the Pluto Plus over the original Adam Pluto. So as mentioned before, we now have two transmit ports and two receive ports. We also have a fully working gigabit ethernet port and a micro SD card slot, which can be used for OS booting. And one of the other most important feature updates is the ability to feed an external clock source directly onto the main board for an IPEX connector. Now, although you may not need to bother as the internal VCTCXO has also been upgraded to 40 megahertz 0.5 PPM reference clock. Now you can also fine tune this internal clock for an onboard adjustable resistor. Now other board features are a dedicated PTT key port via an opto coupler and a DFU key which will put the Pluto Plus instantly into DFU mode if pressed. Now this is useful if you've experienced a firmware failure upgrade and it appears bricked. This will get you out of trouble. So here is the main and only board of the Pluto Plus and down here on the bottom left we have some jumper settings. Now the pre-installed jumper header is currently selecting to use the special firmware for the Pluto Plus. There is also an option to use the standard Pluto firmware if required, but you will need to adjust the jumper to support it. So over on the bottom right, we can see the IPEX connector, which you can provide your own clock reference with a maximum peak of 3.3 volts, which is used for providing external clock. Now to switch to an external clock instead of using the internal clock, there is also a jumper setting for that. Next to this IPEX connector, you can also see the variable resistor. Now this is used for fine tuning the already highly stable internal VCTCXO. Now the internal VCTCXO is located directly below that variable resistor. And for those of you that have replaced the original TCXO and the original Pluto, You'll also notice that this new clock reference is physically further away from all those heat generating components. So in theory and practice with an upgraded clock and less heat to destabilize it, the Pluto Plus should be pretty darn stable. Now keep watching as I'll be putting this to the test later in the video. Now just above the clock in, we will find the DFU button as mentioned earlier. And on the top right of the board, we can see the PTT lines, which is right next to the dedicated five volt USB input. Now on the underside of the board, we can see the micro SD card slot, which of course is also accessible even when the case is on. So to set the IP address for the gigabit ethernet port, simply plug your Pluto Plus into your PC via a USB cable, making sure that you're connected to the data port on the Pluto Plus. Now on Windows, a new file explorer window should open. And within this folder, you can open the config.txt file and then assign an IP address against the IP address setting under the USB Ethernet stanza. So save this file, power off the Pluto, plug in the Ethernet cable, and then power it back up. The Pluto Plus should now be accessible via the assigned IP address. So let's get on to testing how well the new features work, in particular, the inbuilt network connection over 25 meters and how well the TCXO stays stable after prolonged periods of time. To do this test, I'm going to use the Pluto Plus as an exciter for the QO100 uplink on 2.4 gigahertz. So using my 1.2 meter dish and a homemade helix antenna, I have the Pluto Plus connected back to the shack via ethernet. The TX1 is then connected to a small 2.4 GHz preamp and filter, which is then fed into a 20 watt amplifier. 
Now, I've not measured the output power of the Pluto Plus yet, and I probably should have done that before setting this up. However, there was enough output to drive the preamp, which then drove the 20 watt amplifier. Now, what we're looking for here is my signal drifting in frequency while I'm transmitting. Now, the examples here may sound like I am off frequency, but that's only because the people I was talking to were actually off frequency and I had to detune to hear them correctly. Uh, QA100. It's uh, sounding lovely. Uh, not too sure if we've worked before, but uh, I'm about 15 miles west of London and uh, I'm just testing a new setup just to uh, check its stability while I'm running full power and uh, making sure that it's warming up and staying on frequency. Uh, I think I've got your uh, call sign as Zulu Sierra 6 Oscar Juliet November. Is that correct, QSL? Yo, good evening. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey from Zulu Sierra 6 Juliet Oscar November J-O-N It's the same as the name John and we're uh, situated just 30 kilometers west of the city of Johannesburg and if you need the grid locator Killer Golf 33 Victor Victor Signal's good it's uh, absolutely no problem to copy you so whatever you're doing it's A-OK -okay. and uh, I'm running a 1.2 meter dish here with a very old transverter, an amplifier, long length of coax and I suppose a few watts getting out at the feed point. And the driver radio is a very old FT290. So back to you, Mike Zero Delta, Quebec Whiskey from ZS6 Juliet Oscar November. Yeah, ZS6 Juliet Oscar November, Mike Zero Delta, Quebec Whiskey. Yeah, sorry about getting your call sign wrong there. I was uh, fumbling for the keyboard as you were saying your, uh, saying your call sign first of all. Yeah, I don't think we have worked before, but um, yeah, um, normally I, I have a couple of different um, uh, methods for my uplink to QA100. I, I use a DX Patrol Transverser from 2 meters to 2.4 gigs. I uh, also have uh, one of the original uh, add-on Plutos. Uh, which I modified with a extra um, uh, with a better TCXO. But uh, today I received uh, a Pluto Plus. I don't know if you've seen those, but uh, they come with uh, inbuilt Ethernet port and uh, an upgraded TCXO um, already. So it's literally a plug and play solution and using SDR console to uh, to, uh, to to control its frequency and uplink. So uh, from what you can gather from my half an hour of testing, it doesn't sound like it's drifted, which was my main concern, but uh, I think it's working okay, which is good. Anyway, um, perhaps, uh, uh, did you tell me your name, or was your name actually John? <laughs> QSL? Yeah, Roger, Roger. I think it's Matthew, if I look at the QRZ call sign. My name is John, same as the call. Uh, back to you. So this was my third QSO on QO100 using the Pluto Plus, and as you could hear, my frequency was not drifting at all. Now the audio quality does sound slightly digitized and old style 8-bit audio, but I believe that's because the web SDR that I chose to record my audio is actually rather noisy. I should have spent some time and chose a better web SDR. So my personal thoughts on this Pluto Plus is that it is a great out of the box solution, especially for high stable transmitter for QA100 at 2.4 gigs. And I'm very pleased that I purchased this. Now talking of which, I purchased this from Banggood and I'll leave a link in the description. So if you want, you can go and get one yourself. Now it took around seven days to arrive in the UK and it actually arrived via TNT. Now with regards to the extra ports for receive and transmit, I believe the only software at the moment to utilize these at present is the latest version of SDR Angel while using the Mimo Sync. Now maybe I'll do some videos on this in the near future once we get more software support for these ports and extra features. Until the next video guys, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, big shout out to all my Patreon and YouTube subscribers, and until the next video, take care. Thank you.